I'm here in Torona National Park in Colombia, and this video is about ch 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 ch, -ch changes. I've been staying here in uh, Colombia, in Medellin specifically, for about two months. It's like a digital nomad hub that's beautiful, this area called El Poblado, and uh, it's a very beautiful spot, a little unknown, but known within the digital nomad community. I've been there for about two months enjoying myself, working from cafes every day, drinking really clean juice, and it's been an enjoyable experience. But the interesting thing is, how unaware I truly was of the other aspects of Colombia. Like, of course, people telling me, yeah, there's beautiful national parks and other places in the mountains you want to go see, but I was sticking so innately to my comfort zone that I was actually missing all this other beauty. And I had this huge day of goodbyes and love for Medellin, and of course, I deeply, as a place in my heart, but the thing is that when you follow the crowd, even a smaller crowd like a digital nomad scene, you end up in one spot for so long that you end up missing what else is possible, what else is out there. You end up just going where all the other people go and then what ends up happening is all the things I tried to actually escape with being a digital nomad and being able to travel became just right back to the play. All of a sudden I'm doing like a full nine to five, like going to the cafe and you know what? I could do that anywhere. But while I'm here in Colombia, why not come and see these national parks and the ocean and the mountains and go hiking and see monkeys and give them coconuts and all these beautiful things. But the reason is, is because people want to stick to the herd because there's safety in it, there's comfort in it. That's what I was doing there, is I was noticing myself, even though I could go away on the weekends and all my friends were also down, all of us just kind of stuck to this really small little five block area. So lots of fun in that, but the magic I noticed after my big day of goodbyes, suddenly I end up here in Tirona and Taganga and noticing, oh my God, this is insane. We have like this beautiful spot looking at the ocean and there's so much fresh air here. And oh my God, there's a cool restaurant up the road and we have a little pool in there and it's fun and we're playing and there's the best Wi-Fi. And I don't even need to go to a cafe. And suddenly I realized, oh my God, I have actually been immersed in my little fishbowl and not recognizing what else is out there because I got so used to doing that type of lifestyle that I was missing the possibilities of what else was outside of it. So that's the thing with change. You might find yourself surrounding yourself in one similar group and you may find yourself doing the same thing day after day but wanting different results in your life because your life may be a carbon copy of what it was before. So that's why we're gonna dig into changes. We're gonna look into it. We're gonna start to help push you outside of that, especially if you've been wanting more out of life, if you've been wanting more adventure, if you wanna start something like a business, if you wanna create more in your life and you haven't been doing it, well, it's probably because there's some things that you've been immersed in that you're not even recognizing you're in. You're like the fish in the bowl that doesn't even know that it's in water because it's been swimming around, breathing in that water for so long, it forgot that it even is a fish. It's just immersed in that reality. So this is about pushing the boundaries of reality, going to new places, seeing new things, and especially beneficial for those who love traveling. If you've been wanting to really start traveling, this video might encourage you not only from the cool, beautiful scenery, the things like the monkeys and the animals and the sounds, but it's going to help you understand why there's actually strong benefit to traveling. Why travel is going to make a lot of sense because of putting yourself in new environments. You're also gonna feel a strong sense of epiphany, I feel, come from this because you're gonna recognize the importance of seeing where you're getting too stuck in something in one lane and you're gonna to start to see it's great to forge your own trail. If you want things in your life to change, you're going to have to change things in your life. 
It's something that you can't keep doing what you've always done and expect different results because then you're just an insane person. So if you're noticing that there's no shifts, there's no dramatic changes actually happening in your life, that it's literally the same carbon copy life as it was before, and you're repeating time after time again, going to the same job, in the same broken relationships, in the same situations that you're not happy with, there are certain changes that have to be made. So some of those changes could be very simple things. It's like, if you're waking up every morning and the first thing you do is you grab your toothbrush and brush your teeth, try doing something else instead. Go online and order one of those tongue scrapers and tongue scrape first. Instead of going the same way to work you always go or walking the same way to the cafe, try going a different direction. It's crazy what actually happens when you just add little micro shifts into your day. So when it's like you hear these lines to change things in your life, it doesn't necessarily have to be a massive thing. It could be a small thing. It could just be start to give your brain new abilities to see new things, open up new lanes. You're starting to open up the engineering of the brain and focus to be able to get new stimuli, new data. So it could be as small as walking a different way to work or taking a, a bus versus an Uber, which if you're used to that, or eating a new meal you haven't eaten before. Trying out new things can make dramatic changes and those small things can also be big things too. You can be starting with those smaller little habit shifts, but if you make those bigger changes, like those big leaps, like you know what? If you've been really unhappy with your job and you've been talking about starting your own business for a year, you literally hear yourself speaking like a broken record, maybe it's actually time to just leave. If you're getting bored with yourself, hearing yourself talking about what is going on in your life, that's probably a good sign. And of course, be smart, you can leave on a good note, but sometimes you just gotta push it forward and make it happen. So really consider that, like those, th this life you're living, there's certain things you've done that are habitual, there's certain patterns, there's certain things that are actually creating these results, and these are the patterns that you're doing every single day. So if you start to change those patterns, you change the input, it changes the output. So I'd recommend it, if you literally, as simple as this, if you brush your teeth first thing in the morning and use your right hand because you're right-handed, switch it to your left. These are literally things that I've done, and I've noticed like they start to shift the way the brain thinks. Patterns are good to some extent, but this is only in the context that you want something in your life to actually change dramatically. That's why you wanna start looking at what are these things in your life that you can change right now, these obvious ones, and make those micro changes, and when those inputs shift, the outputs can start to change as well. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what if I never left my hometown? What if I had actually never left Aurora? I asked myself that. What if I had never left Aurora? What if I had just stayed there and just got a stable job in town and just worked my way up into the corporation? What if? It feels like an impossibility, honestly, to even question it because it's something so far from my current reality. And it's hard to even play the imagination technique, but it's a worthwhile one to go down. So what if I had stayed in the first relationship? What if you had stayed in your first relationship? What if you had stayed in the hometown that you were born in? What if you stayed at the first job you got? Where would your life currently be? At some point along the way, you took certain risks to get somewhere. You left certain things you were doing because they no longer were applicable to you, so you took on a new route or a new path. And it certainly probably wasn't even comfortable at the time. I know for me it was not comfortable getting in a car and driving across the country to Los Angeles, California to try to make something happen, but I understood something that my mentor showed me right away, and he said, Shane, Risk is a, is a social phenomenon, it's a made up concept. Risk actually doesn't exist. See, the only risks that are true are if there's alligators in this pond and I jump in, there's a primal risk. There's a risk that you might die if you go the wrong way in the woods. There's some primal risks that exist, but the risks that most of us are afraid of are completely socially fabricated. I'll give you an example, uh, my friend Mike. Michael told me something very important. I had, a, I had a little apartment in Toronto at one point, and he was coming over, and he decided to uh, stay over for a few days, so he was sleeping on the couch, and at one point it kind of dawned on him that this is the, this is the place that here he is sleeping on my couch, a friend's couch, that most people assume is like the worst place you could end up if things don't work out. If your job falls through or you start a new business and it doesn't work, you end up on the couch. Or you get kicked out of your relationship, you end up on the couch. And here's Michael laying there and actually realizing, this is actually kind of fun. 
course, maybe not in the long term, but as if it's the worst that could happen, it's actually not that bad. So you probably have friends in your life, you probably have people that you could fall back on if things didn't go well. And that's why I want to inherently just point out that most of the risks that you're associating are so big and so grand that are stopping you from going after what you want. Those risks are usually made up phenomena. And you've dealt with risk in the past. You've dealt with things where you left that relationship, that first one you were in, and it probably hurt like hell. It probably hurt to leave that first job and it's a little uncomfortable for a little while. Maybe you had to scrounge some money together and make it work. But the big thing is here. If you don't ever try to take the shot at something, to go after something and make your life more adventurous, life is not going to give it to you. Like some things in life will come to you, but this isn't one of them. For you to go after your dreams and goals, you gotta make that movement. You gotta take that risk. It's not even real. And if you don't do it, the longer you wait, the harder it gets because those newer pathways become stronger and stronger and become more and more formed to that pattern, to that way of life. So if there's something you are wanting to do, the longer you hold back, the stronger you build those patterns, and every single day it gets just a little incy bound harder. So define what it is that you really want to go after and realize, okay, if I don't do this now, what will my life look like in five years? That's a really amazing exercise to start to figure that out. What would your life look like, as I asked you at the start here, if you hadn't left your hometown, if you hadn't started that relationship or left that relationship, what would your life look like if you didn't do some of the moves you did to go after a happier experience? So realize probably the thing you're facing right now is just another one of those things, whatever that is. Uh, for me, it was starting my business. I was very scared at that point about starting my business. It was like, oh, it's so freaky. And then my mentor for years, by the way, years, so it's not like, oh, I just got up and just started doing shit. It took years of my mentor chipping away at the stone telling me, bro, you're just making this other person rich. Like, why don't you actually just do what you really want to do? Like, it's fine to do that and build a company with someone if you really believe in the vision and you like where it's going. No issue there whatsoever. Go after it, do it. But only if that's in your skills and desire. But for me, I knew I wanted to do my own thing. I knew that I wanted to start my own business and it took years my mentor just constantly saying every little tack and technique to get me and say, Shane, you're following the herd right now. You're doing what everyone else thinks is safe and what's comfortable and this, wh where's your life gonna be? Like, what do you wanna do? I'm like, I wanna travel the world. I wanna see the whole world. I wanna have multi-million dollars in my bank account because I want that freedom. I want that freedom to send my friends on vacation with me or my family. I want to live a free existence where I choose the schedule and the time. He said, okay, so do you think in this current position you're in, this will ever be possible? Is your boss going to pay you multi-millions of dollars and let you travel and choose your own schedule? And I realized there's no shot in hell it's going to happen. So he said, you realize then, the better move for you right now logically would actually go buy a lottery ticket. Maybe you can relate in some facet in your life where you realize the, what you want to have happen is never going to happen if you stay in your current position. So you might as well go buy a lottery ticket. So if you're in a lottery ticket position where it's a better odds that you get a lottery ticket to make your dream happen, that's probably a good indicator you should start. It's probably a good indicator you should give something up, try a new path, and deal with the uncomfort of the newness that's gonna come your way. I can tell it to you this way, if I look back at my life and I realize those little decisions that were those hardest ones, oftentimes proved out to be truly the most rewarding decisions. Truly the most rewarding decisions. Now's the time to start, just don't wait. The reason why change can be difficult, it can be very hard to make those different pattern shifts, to create new habits, to actually get started, to make those shifts in your life you need to make, is because change at a very fundamental level requires that the neural pathways in your mind, the habits and patterns of energy that you do every single day, like how you brush your teeth, how you drive to work, how you say I love you to your lover, how you eat your food. These are ingrained patterns that you've been doing for so long, you forgot you're doing them. Almost like a little fish in its little fishing bowl. You forgot you're even in the water anymore. So these neural pathways want to keep you doing the same thing. And you can picture this neural pathway literally like a rope. 
Picture, it's like a highway you're driving down. You've been doing this pattern for so long and it's so comfortable and easy and smooth sailing, but it's not getting you the results you want. So, if I ask you now to drive off-road, let's take a shortcut and get you to the spot you want to go, you have to go off-road. You're going to be hitting bumps and rocks and trees. It's going to be tough. You've got to create a new path. And in order to create a new path, you got to start taking some micro actions first. That's why I'm recommending strongly, start doing little changes first to get yourself comfortable with the idea of newness. You see, newness creates anxiety. There's an anxiety that comes from doing new things. Now that seems contradictive, like obviously it'd be fun getting on the plane and going to some cool tropical beach, but there's a lot of things that are new within that that are challenging. Translation errors, not, not feeling fully understood by the people you're talking to, and ending up spending more money on things like cabs and little logistical issues. That's new stuff. Stuff that you probably, like I'm not used to when I'm back home. I'm just doing the same routines. But by doing and initiating those changes, you're creating that newness. That newness of that environment, when it when that anxiety comes up, what is the best thing to do because of that new anxiety of being in a new situation where you don't know how to do it? Imagine you're at a dinner and there's four knives, three forks, and 17 spoons, and you don't know which one to grab for what dish. You're gonna start looking towards what other people are doing to get your biofeedback of what you should be doing. So, you can use that type of feedback around you, look around you when you're in a new situation and adapt from it. When you're making these new little changes, like you take a new route to work, suddenly you're like, oh, I didn't know this was over here. So because the newness creates this anxiety, and by taking on new patterns, new behaviors, going to new countries, experiencing new things, starting a new business, all these new things are gonna be coming at you that you're not familiar with, and it can create a little bit of an issue. Here's the way that I found that's helped me the most around this, and it's simple. I have fun. I just laugh when crazy shit's going on, new patterns that I'm not familiar with. So if I don't understand a part of the language and there's a disagreement about something and all of a sudden there's a logistical error, the best thing for me is dance, have fun, laugh, because that's all there is anyways to it. You're a little speck on a blue dot in the middle of a galaxy. There's so much. So there's no need to get too anxious. And I try to remember that whenever new things are going on is, hey, I'm even lucky that I even get to go to a beautiful country. And sure, there's issues at times, but the best part is, get to experience this and rewire my brain, change those neural pathways, and become more proficient. And the more new things you add to your repertoire, to your plate, the more comfortable you get. And then change becomes easier. So some of the things is just start traveling, start going to see new places, start doing little new m maneuvers, new habits. And those changes then become simpler and simpler and simpler. And those neural pathways going off the main highway into the jungle becomes easier because you've crossed that path before. Do you ever feel your thoughts howling at you? You hear this insistent sound inside your mind saying, why haven't you left? Why haven't you gone and gotten out of this? Why haven't you gone for the adventure that's available? Why haven't you bought on that plane or started this? Why? If you hear that incessant howling in the mind, that's time to go. If you feel yourself looking around in your, your brain's reticular activation system, the system that causes you to focus on certain things, is noticing as you walk through bookstores, you see books on travel, or you see books on, you start to spot the books on business, or you see the books on how to find love, and you see yourself constantly noticing these things. You're in a cafe, and you look over it, and you see a couple so happy, and so in just an, a beautiful space, kissing and sharing each other's lattes. And you notice those things very easily. Whatever you're noticing, commonalities throughout the day that your awareness goes towards immediately and you find yourself just staring at it and really just appreciating it for a moment. That howling that's going on in your mind is literally your spirit communicating with you saying, wake up, 
It's time to do what you're meant to do. So whenever you hear that little voice in your head, consistently making sounds, and you see yourself observing and noticing those signs around you, take the signs and observe them and take them and put them into action. This is the time to start. I don't want those voices to be loud anymore. I want those voices to go away. It may seem like the safe path is taking the path most walked before, taking the path that you see everyone else doing. The thing that is what the herd does. The path that they move is the path of safety. See, the, the thing is, most people, what they're doing is they're looking around at what other people are doing, and then they're just taking note and following that path. But the issue with that is they don't know the context that those people have for why they're doing what they're doing. If you just start going into the first job that seems appropriate for you, you take on the first relationship that just comes your way, or you just take on what other people plan for you and they say, you know, we're just gonna go here and travel over there, and you just always say yes to those things, but you never actually choose from deep within, what ends up happening is you start to get very discontented. You start to get to a point where you feel like this path that you're walking has been walked by so many other people that aren't you and that don't have your same intentions in mind of what you're trying to create. So I've found for myself that discontent comes from actually walking that familiar path for too long, where I'm doing things, trying to fit in and doing it how other people do it. A good example for that is with uh, social media, I found, I take a, I, I feel like there's a smart level to this where you can observe people who are, do, who are doing really good results, you're doing good marketing, but also sharing good content. and. I found myself observing and taking note of like certain things they would do, like how they would post, how often they'd post, how long they would post. But what ended up happening is it can go too far. You start ending up over observing. You start ending up carbon copying too much. And it becomes this thing of, well, I, you start to say, I can't do this because they don't do it that way. Or I can't get that kind of role because that's not what people do. They do this. You end up starting to make your decisions based on what other people do with their lives and how they make decisions, but they're not you. They're not this, using the same decision faculty and they don't have the same intentions of where you wanna go. So in some of life, of course it's important to be able to focus on what are results and things that work? What are paths and mentor things and lessons that are, are good pieces of note? They're golden sage wisdom. But at a certain point, you can't keep walking the familiar path. You have to get off that path. You have to try something that's uniquely your own. And that's a beautiful thing I think Bruce Lee talks about, the idea of you do what is, you, you learn from others, you learn what is good and what is not good, you push that away and you add what is uniquely your own. Now the last step in that principle, doing what is uniquely your own, that is a very valuable part. That's what I wanna hone in on. This isn't about just following mentors, it's also about knowing what's the right situation for you. What's your context? What's your intention? That's a huge thing to know. So if you keep walking the familiar path, you will eventually get discontented because sooner or later you will come to a point on that road where no longer was that mentor or that person you were observing, it was no longer your path to follow. That's where you have to fork off. And when that fork off comes, I want you to just think of this. I want you to think of these moments and really be aware of what's going on and observe where you've transcended your guru, your master, where you've transcended the information you've been learning from. When you've decided, I've taken it this far, it's now time to go the rest of the way. And the way you can do that, the way you can know immediately is the feeling of discontent. It's actually a very beautiful feeling. When that becomes clear to you that something's a little off, I feel like I've taken this lesson as far as it can go, you'll feel the discontentment in your body. You'll start to feel you're just observing and doing what other people are doing. So when you get to that state, that's the moment for change. The way I know I've gone to that place is when I literally can observe something my mentor saying, and although it logically sounds correct, I can feel in my gut, it's actually not right for me though. The moment you start saying this isn't right for me, that's when that happens. It's that little voice in the background telling you, making you aware, pay attention, perhaps you've gone far enough. So don't be afraid to walk off the familiar path and create your own.